you understand what I'm saying here? If if she's gone, but this don't lead hypothetically, please. Yeah. Don't hypothetically, lead on that she was there. Did you hear what I said? Okay. Yeah. So let's let's get back to that because I feel like you and me are kind of getting off track. Yep. He told me that her and him have had communication issues for about six years where she just seems really, like, detached and uninterested in, like, trying to, like, build something with him. Um, and he said, and I said, six years is a really long time for you guys to not fix that considering they were married for, what, eight? I mean, that's, like, the majority of their marriage. It was... Her and I have drifted so far apart that it's kind of a mutual agreement that this is not going to work. As far as you knew, um, he was just leaving her. He had two children, and um, that was the final take on that. Yes. I think, I know why he lied to me. He lied to me because if I'd have known that he had a child on the way, I'd have never wasted my time with him in the first place. Like, none of this would have ever even occurred if he would have just told me the truth. In the following... Notice the detective's multiple self-repairs. Self-repairs are self-initiated interruptions of self-initiated utterances. They show that the speaker is uncomfortable with carrying out a certain speech action, such as a question. So do you think if he found out that you, um, if, let's say this week you guys were to go look at some apartments, and this is hypothetical, but you, um, You've never found out that his wife was pregnant. Would would that have changed anything? Uh, like you just said, if I knew he was his wife was pregnant, I wouldn't be in this picture. The detectives completed his turn constructional unit, which is what we call an utterance that has reached its first possible completion point, grammatically and or vocally. Yet the detective keeps modifying with the associating, like you just said. When aligning with the subject, the subject's often more likely to answer. Despite his indirect statements and politeness strategies, the detective's about to be in deep trouble. Listen to this. So if his wife was not pregnant, um, and forgive me, but if, if, if he takes her out of the picture, you're never going to know that she was pregnant, right? What do you mean, takes her out of the picture? Like, if, if he murdered her... She's out of the picture. You're never going to know if she was pregnant. If he can get away with murder, you're not going to... I got divorced from my wife. You see, do you understand what I'm saying here? If, if she's gone... But this... Don't lead. Hypothetically. Please. Yeah, don't lead on. Hypothetically. If she... Okay. You understand what, where I'm going. If right, you didn't you're, know... You're leading into right. questions that are nothing with your... If you didn't know, though... Wait, Nick. That she was there. Did you hear what I said? I'm not. I'm following you. I just want her to answer a question that relates to. She said something that's important. That if he didn't have a child on the way, she, or if he didn't, if she didn't know that, she would have continued the relationship, right? At what point does he think that I'm going to be not, in a relationship? I'm not talking about the children. I'm just talking specifically about her. If, it, and if if you only knew if the kids were still here. And he called you and said, I'm divorced from my wife. And he gets away with this. Do you understand what I'm thinking from his aspect? I still wouldn't do it. I still wouldn't do it because I'd be like, where did she go? Okay. He says okay with downwards intonation. This functions as an approval. And the approval is given very fast. Because I'm under the impression that she's a really good mom. Like, he never bashed her mom in skills. Like, he... No. No. I wouldn't... No. Okay. No. And that's... that. you see where I'm trying to take that? Yes. So... Here, it's sensitive to the detective to make sure that he hasn't upset Nicole. No, Before he formulates anything else, he wants to clear to the air yes. first. So, he never... You guys never had a conversation about... The child, period. I didn't know okay. at all. all right. And by your words, if you did know, you would have ended the relationship. Well, because it wouldn't have made sense to me that he's like, I'm getting separated. Oh, by the way, I have a baby on the way. It's like, it's 15 you are a liar. You're just trying to sleep with me. 
that's what I would have probably interpreted that as, and I'd have just shut that off at work, and that would have been the end of it. Okay. I'm going to need you to do that once we're done talking. Okay, sure. I can get somebody in touch with you today, um, and you don't need to tell me about anything. We talked about that yesterday, but it might be something good for you to do, and, and I can make that happen today. Thank you. You're welcome. So what you texted me about 2 a.m. and said that you uh, remembered some other information. What did you remember? Like just kind of odds and ends. Um, and I'm sure there will be more as this goes on. I just, I interacted with him so much that sometimes, like, I just have to stop and think about how much information that I have gotten from him over the last few months in the last week or so and you know like i said i never know what's true and what's not anymore sure. but i figure i'll just give you guys everything i have everything i have is a subtle reassurance that she's honest and a team player with her stress and the personal pronoun i she implicitly states that there are other people that also have information and hopefully i don't have to keep calling you back with more but no promises no that's okay um, please do i like i told you yesterday anything that comes to mind that you think is important i'd like to know because you again you know him better than anybody probably over the last six to eight weeks so that's that's anything that he said to you or anything that stands out to you as you're reflecting on all this um kind of mess here is important for me to know understood um this is a role reversal here it's the detective who has to say that it's okay for the subject to call back with additional information. This can be classified as a gaining the detective's favor technique, because we can safely assume that Nicole knows it's alright for her to call back, and she already knew this before the detective's lengthy reassurance. A couple things. So one, I went back and I tried to like find whatever text you were talking about between my friend Charlotte and me with the eat harmony thing, and I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, if you and I, I mean, her and I text so much though. So like, if you find it and you show it to me, let me know. But it's just like, I mean, I was on that site, but it was never like worth a damn for me. Sure. So. It wasn't really something that I ever, like, discussed with her. And the, the only, again, the only concern I had there is there seemed like there was some conversation about a boyfriend. And <clears throat> it doesn't seem like, so you were actually talking to her about Chris, not a boyfriend. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I don't, I like, I went back through those texts. I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> I don't see anything about eHarmony. I mean, and if and it's in there, maybe it is, and I just missed it. But okay. it's like, no, I don't know. It, it's I not mean, all that important. Mind. It's not all that okay. important. So we can move past that. What, okay. what else? Um, in the following, notice how Nicole gets the upper hand in this conversation. The two of them are discussing the dates and durations of the conversations between Chris and Nicole. I don't even know. I almost wish you guys would show me my phone. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna read home. off your phone calls for Monday and Tuesday, starting. No, it's on Monday. Okay, just, just so tell me on Monday night. Monday night, you guys had um, we talked about um, a phone call yesterday, but you guys had a phone call Monday night. It looks like he called you. It was 48 minutes and 57 seconds. It was at 9:48 p.m. that he called you. Um, so that would take us to about 10.35, and then there's another call on Monday. It's for 51 minutes and 25 seconds, it looks like. I'm not sure, looking at this, who called who, but it looks like you called him, and that was at 11.09 p.m. That lasted 51 minutes, so that takes us to um, midnight. And then there's another phone call where he calls you. So we're now into midnight, you know, Tuesday morning, it's a 30 minute phone call um, that lasts until 12.38 a.m. And then after 12.38 a.m., there's a two minute and 44 second phone call that lasts for, or pardon me, that starts at 1.12 a.m. It's two minutes and 44 seconds. So Yeah, so I would almost, this is just me, but I would go get my text messages with him from that night and I would like sync them up to that like time frame because okay. there was texting in between that. So I think what happened is he called me on that first call 
and then there's that gap between the first call and the second call, and then we continue to talk. So that little gap right there between those two big phone calls at the very beginning of the night, yes. I mean, not the very beginning of the night, but the, like, the big, big ones at the, the, the first two. So in between that gap, there's, a, there's like a quick FaceTime. So do you think that two minute and 44 second is the FaceTime? The one at the very end? Yeah. Well, so no, there's, there's, there's. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't even think the FaceTime's on there because okay, the so FaceTime occurred in between those two big phone calls. That okay. I didn't know, and that would have been the last time that I talked to him until the work day on Monday. And that's when he texted you at like three forty-five. No, we talked during work. Remember, I told you he like randomly texted me throughout the day at work, but it was like it was just like conversation. Okay. It wasn't like anything. Of no, no sustenance. Okay. So the, the most important thing that you've said here is this Monday night phone call, um, he doesn't have any sheets on the bed, and he said his children's sheets were smelly. They smell. Okay. Yeah, so let's, let's get back to that, because I feel like you and me are kind of getting off track. Yep. So go to those, those, those that. Remember I told you is the first sign of Nicole's upper hand in the conversation, calling the agent to remember what she said. The most direct sign is her saying that they're getting off track. Here the roles are reversed yet again. Normally, it's the detective's job to say this. He then agrees with her. She effectively shuts down the conversation, dismissing it as a digression. That first long phone call. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm really trying to help you guys. I just, I need you guys to help me too. Like, yes, ma'am. This is a team, but just don't. <laughs> so, the, down, the reason I, why um, we can't, like, I do, I think... So I think your personal mental health is the number one issue. So let me help you with that and get in a victim advocate to call you. Um, and you can address questions of employment with them. I think they're better suited to answer those questions than I am. Um, so I, I would ask you to direct questions to them. If they can't answer them, um, I'll try to help you as best as I can. These were a few observations on a Saturday in my garden. Thanks for watching.